The reality is, guys prefer naturals. And if it's natural body wash you're looking for, Dr. Squatch has got you natural kings covered. The ingredients, naturals. Scent options, naturals. Around the clock moisturization, naturally. Now available in store and online at drsquatch.com. Dr. Squatch Body Wash for men who prefer natural. What up, y'all? It's Joe Button here to talk about prize picks. Prize picks is the best place to win real money while watching football. You can get up to 100 times your money. Prize picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. This show is part of the Head Stuff Podcast Network. This episode of The G-Spot is sponsored by Playblue, Ireland's favourite adult store. Playblue.ie has a huge selection of adult toys as well as some deadly deals. There really is something for everyone, no matter what bits you have or what you're into. Check out Playblue.ie today. I'm really, really excited to have you on, Natasha. Um, For listeners, I'm going to be talking to Natasha O'Brien and I think some people are going to know the name straight away and some people... (laughs) It's going to ring a bell, but they're not going to be like maybe 100% yeah. sure. Where do I know that name from? Because that's what happened to me. <laughs> so Natasha, and we were discussing this kind of before we started recording, she's really um, an advocate for human rights. Yes. That's what we were saying. For a healthier society, um, for people I suppose to be treated better, better, better. by the justice system, yeah. all of that. Yeah. And how people will probably know you listening to this is because mm. you've been all across Irish media and probably beyond Irish beyond, media. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Over the last, was it the last kind of year where? Um, I think it all kickstarted in June. So In June. Okay. Yeah. So I was attacked two years ago mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, by an Irish soldier. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, obviously when there is an ongoing investigation, you can't, radio silence. You cannot yeah. speak. You will be prosecuted for defamation. Mm-hmm. So I, I just kept all that wrapped it up into mm-hmm. my, wrapped it up, kept it to myself. Stru- struggled with it. Tough. Yeah. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Um. So obviously, then I was in court. Um. I faced my attacker. Uh. In June, mm-hmm. the start of June, mm-hmm. and he received a suspended sentence mm-hmm. for beating me unconscious and. Not stopping. He mm-hmm. had to be pulled off me by a passerby who heard my friend screaming for help. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And he subsequently bragged about it in a group chat with his male friends, um, which was which was also given as evidence to the judge. Um, he was, I think it was, um, the quote is, two to put her down, two to put her out. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always remember yeah. reading that and just... Oh, I've been sick in my oh stomach. My yeah. Mm, me too. Enraged. Me yes. too. Yeah. Me too. Mm. Be- um, mm. So that was really, um, I think, I was leading up to that, I knew that there was a court date and mm. I was kind of like, okay, um, do you know, just a little bit all over the place, mm. a bit broken, mm. um, just kind of living a little bit in limbo. Mm. My mental health was just, it went to the dogs. It just mm went down Mm. um so when it finally came up and I you know went into court I thought oh my god like there is CCTV footage of this there is multiple eyewitnesses there is my medical reports Mm. there is the incriminating messages of him bragging about it the following day I mean and the list goes on he's a Irish soldier Mm -hmm. who pledged to, you know, you take a pledge when you enlist in the Irish Defence Forces to um, protect the civilians of Ireland. That's literally like the Mm -hmm. first part of the Irish Defence Forces pledge. Mm -hmm. They're a peacekeeping force. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he um, kept the peace very well. Um, So there was that too. Mm -hmm. And um, um, the outrage came when the judge decided not to give him any a sentence, a custodial mm. sentence, um, because he he didn't want to impact his career mm. as a soldier and had no regard for the impact that it had on me and my mm. life. I had I had to I lost my job because I was yeah. so unfit to work. I was so I went so low mentally. Mm-hmm. Um and there was no consideration for that. It was I think what it really enraged the country was that 
this man who unprovokingly lay his hands on a woman, a person, mm-hmm. um, had had been prioritised and his career had been prioritised over his victim mm-hmm. and everything he had inflicted on his victim. Yeah. And when you when we go back to kind of the reason why why did that happen? I was walking home from work mm-hmm. um, two years ago and myself and my friend were getting a taxi together because as women, we're told don't walk the streets alone yep. at night. Mm-hmm. We're told this all over the world. Mm. But like in Ireland, we definitely, no, like we, you will always text your girlfriends being like, did you get home okay? Are you texting when you're home? Or like, I'll go home with you or you can come back with me. You know, it's just so, like it's just ingrained into us that yeah. we do not walk alone at night. Yeah. Never. Wasn't even walking alone. Mm. Um, we saw these boys shouting really aggressively using homophobic slurs at this boy across the street by himself and we were just kind of looking at each other and like I was just thinking to myself I was like oh my god like they're literally going to go over there and Mm beat beat the life out of him Mm -hmm. like they are super like they're really you know you can I can feel the hostility Mm -hmm. so like we're just kind of walking by and my friend just says ah lads don't be calling anyone a Mm. Do you know when a slur? Do you know mm. what the slur they were using? Yeah. And then I, I was kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, don't be at that. Don't be using those kind of words. Mm. And that's when all that aggression was turned to me because my friend was like ahead of me. Mm. So I think I was just the closest punching bag, to be mm. honest. Mm-hmm. And when I look back at it now, I feel like, and I kind of really try to think about it and how did that happen? Why did that happen? Mm. I kind of think. You know, we in this society, and that's why I kind of like to say I advocate for humans. Yeah. Because in this society, we have stopped looking out for each other as much. Mm. And there are people that do look out for each other. Mm. And there are people that care about one another. Yeah. But there are cert- there are a lot of people that just keep their heads down. Yeah. There are a lot of people that just walk away. Mm-hmm. And there are bad people that are seriously surprised mm. when someone asks them to stop being nasty and yeah. vicious and mm. violent and homophobic mm. they have a problem with that so I feel like I it was it was a it was maybe an insult mm. that I was asking him not to be homophobic like how dare I yeah. question challenge how dare him. I challenge yeah. him like he I am a six foot three soldier and you are telling me what I can and can't do no you know that's that's how yeah. I felt like that's yeah. what it felt like it was just kind of like who does this girl think she is trying yeah. to tell me what to do? Whenever something like this happens and it makes it into the news and it, it is it is invoking this really emotional mm. reaction from people and there's this big public discussion, it, it throws light on not just this, like, mm. this guy. I'm not even no. going to go into his name. I, no. Whatever. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's the societal, yes. much bigger problem. But that's, that's it. Yeah. Because when people... My issue, my, I found, I definitely found myself getting a little bit frustrated mm. with like people kind of taking their energy and their anger and outrage and pointing it towards this one individual. Yeah. yeah. I was like, hey, 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 guys. Yeah. Do you realize it's, this is literally just how society has created him. Yeah. And this is how, this is the, these are the products of our justice system mm. failing time and time again. Mm-hmm. I mean, when when there are constant sentencing mm. for violence, for sexual violence, for domestic violence, mm. all when there is constant suspended sentences mm-hmm. and constant leniency and judges are just making excuses for careers and di- mm. like all different um all different factors. And I understand that you do have to consider lots of different a- mm. um aspects in mm. when you're making a sentence. That's required. You have to take things into account. Of course. But What's not been taken into account is the victim. Yeah, of course. At all. Yeah. And what has been done to the victim. Mm. And I do not understand a criminal justice system that is centred around supporting the criminals. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's what it is at yeah. times. And that's what it looks like and feels like. And it's it's awful. And like then we, we're like, oh, why didn't you report it? Or mm. why didn't of you? Of course, why would you? Why would you? Why would you? Like there's stuff I have decided, not like that, um, mm. but there's stuff I've decided actually after some interactions not to report. And so many women, um, and I know mm-hmm. people at large, particularly women, I suppose in my life are the same. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm not putting myself through that. Yeah. And it's such, and it just speaks to such a, there's just something so broken and like, it's you so know, cool. that misogyny and that homophobia even was mm. at play there. And like he was with friends why did friends, his friends stop friends. him? That's outrageous. They like were grown men. They were standing there. My friend said that they were just standing there watching her scream for help. 
that nearly for me that was That's, even the cherry on top of how disgraceful like oh, it's mm. one thing to have this guy do that that's obviously actually yeah. horrendous and you know obviously we know we're yeah. on the same page yeah, like yeah, just yeah. the worst <laughs> um but to have five you said five yeah four or five yeah four or five grown men watch their friend literally beat up a woman on the street like the level Pulverized. of yeah the level of bystander that's going on there is almost nearly like it, it's quite mind blowing and it just shows that we actually really need to work on particularly again with men like mm. calling each other out standing up to each other for God's I sake really, I really do like I like to I like to um, really try to be as neutral in all of this yeah. and I like to I like to acknowledge how hard it actually is for men in this society too. Yeah. Because men have feelings. Mm-hmm. Men are human beings with emotions. Men, and they are expected to suppress all of it. 100%, they are, yeah. are, they are, I know we have so many, like we have so many expectations as women. Mm-hmm. We really do. Mm-hmm. We have beauty standards that men just don't have. We yeah. have fashion standards men don't have. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. there's just, the list goes on and on Yeah. Um, for women. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we, there's, I feel like there are a number of different stereotypes of women. Mm. There are different types of categories you can fit into as a woman in society. Yeah. I feel like with men, there is very, very narrow. There's a very narrow, yeah. cash, there's a very narrow stereotype for you to be considered a man. Mm. You know, like it's really, I just feel like it's, there's a lot of pressure on men to um, not be themselves at all and to stay quiet and to do whatever the macho man is doing and, yeah. you know, all these be like... Be dominant, yeah. you know, be strong. Mm. And I, I, I think what you're describing there reminds me of um, something that... Uh, I don't know if you heard of Brene Brown. She's like a mm. researcher, author. She does a lot on... Um, loads of work on empathy, but also gender mm. and different bits. And she, from her research, she found that... I think this is kind of what you're saying. She found that men felt... No, we'll start with women. Yeah. Women felt that like the pressures of being a woman felt like being caught on a web. Yes. So almost that like you can't win because you have to be like, you know, have a career but not be too ambitious. So you, you need to be caring and nurturing, but, you know... Not um, too sensitive. Yeah, yeah. And there's all these double standards, right? Mm. Millions of them, Oh, so right? many double standards. <laughs> that you can't win. And then... so compared to being in a web and then that that the pressures of being a man is like being in a box. Mm. So like the box is like just never, ever, ever be perceived as weak in any way, no, no. matter what. And mm-hmm. that men, while we're, I would argue we're not really allowed to have that many emotions, but while women are expected to have, to have emotions. different emotions, the only really socially acceptable emotion we see for men is anger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's so destructive to the men yeah. as well as it's, obviously of course, of course women. It Everyone. Is. It's destructive to yeah. society. At I large. mean, for me and my journey and, you know, speaking out about what happened to mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. um, I have so many men coming up to me being like, I'm so sorry on behalf of my gender. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not your yeah. fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. There are bad women too. Yes. And that's yeah. not the rest of the women's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Like just because there are some bad women yeah. doesn't mean there are, do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. I'm like, it's not your fault what happened to me. Mm. He's like, I know, but I'm embarrassed. And I'm like, but it has nothing got to do with you. And yeah. you're, you know, nowhere near, mm. you don't align with that. Mm-hmm. And if you had been there, you would have stopped it immediately. And yeah. he's like, yes, I would. You know, so I'm mm. like, okay, so what? there's nothing for you to feel guilty about. No, because um, that's not really helpful either. No, it's not. When I first met you and I was like, yeah. I was doing the whole year. Inspiring. I'm so know, glad so. for you. But look, it is true. And like what I would say is that, you know, it, it is an incredible thing to, to speak up um, because mm. it does. No one should have to do it mm. ever, but it does help move the public conversation mm. forward a bit. And um, it helps like, which I'm not going into in this podcast, but, you know, I, I said to you, like, I've had my own experiences of physical violence mm. um mm-hmm. and it 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 nearly became the defining factor of my life but it does and for you to be going through it publicly mm-hmm. that's what people are associating mm. you with to a degree right so you're here because you're so much more than that I'm so much so more than much that. that's only like a I'm, significant thing but it's only one part yeah, of your life I was you, a victim of a crime yes 
I was a victim of was. a crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all it is. Exactly. A, yeah. yeah, a crime happened to me. Mm-hmm. But here I am to mm-hmm. tell the tale and I'm going to tell it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to tell more tales. Yes, and exactly. I'm, you know, I've been given an opportunity mm-hmm. um, because something so unfortunate and so atrocious happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he just couldn't see anything right with that. Mm-hmm. You know, that it really, and I think because I'm just like, I was such a normal girl like mm. I feel like do you know just your average 22 year old and I was coming home from work and you know there was just nothing like overly abnormal or like mm. crazy about my life mm-hmm. and then this just happened to me because I was literally just like ah lads don't leave leave mm. them alone please mm-hmm. like like oh my god and, and like that changed. could literally happen to anyone because mm-hmm. like the, the, there are so many great people in this mm. society. Like I know I spoke at the start about the problems of people keeping their head down, but we mm. have some really good people in this society. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. And like I've received so many messages from people being like, oh, like I saw someone doing this to that person. I was like, stop. Or I mm. I was um, walking this, I was walking down this street mm. and um, someone was being homophobic and I asked them to stop or, mm. you know, or I have, I have a lot of men text me being like, oh, like, I'm always, if I ever see anyone being attacked, like I'm always jumping in to try and help and mm. I'm getting hurt. And, you know, it's it's a common thing. We do have a lot of people that yeah. want to help and mm-hmm. don't want to see people being harmed. Of course, yeah. But mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's, I think it's more so, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh my God, what was this? <laughs> I'm after losing my train of thought. I'm after you were just saying, do you know, that it's it's an opportunity that you're going about your life and Sorry. then this big thing happened. No, yeah. no, yeah, it's all yeah. relevant. But yeah, like, yeah. I definitely think like, Oh my God, no, my train of thought is just gone. <laughs> That's fine. It's just gone. It's absolutely <laughs> That's gone. That's fine. This happens when we're passionate about different things yeah, and we, we yeah, just go yeah, off yeah. down yeah. one road. But you know, just we were, just to reiterate that like, you know, as you said, you're, you were a victim of a crime and that mm. doesn't mean that I... Like that that's your whole identity and that's Mm-mm. why we're, we're going to be, you know, listeners, we're, we're going to move on. We're going to be talking about different bits. Yes. This is the okay. G-spot after yes. all. Um, but it's interesting. It is interesting how like it can become that, that it can feel defining for it a does. while it and feels. feel... Um, I don't know what the word. I remember uh, going to the doctor after I had been assaulted mm. and um, I mean, this, this will always stay with me and it's such mm. a small thing. But I went in and I was, I was like, I was 20, 20. Was it 20? Mm. I was 20. And I went in with my mom and I clearly like had a black eye. Like Mm -hmm. I I had physical injuries and um, I came in and we went up to reception. She just looked up and she's like, oh, are you the girl that was assaulted? Uh, And I was like, uh, I went into that waiting room and I just cried mm-hmm. and cried and cried and cried on my mom's shoulder in the waiting room with yeah. everyone else mm-hmm. people I knew people who were you know in the oh same college lived on the same road as me I wasn't even brought into like another room or anything mm-hmm. and it's like sorry I'm not bringing this make about myself oh my God, but it no, was that, literally, yeah. are you the girl that was assaulted and then you know in a nightclub I remember people coming up to me who I had never met saying are you Grace O'Shea and I was like yeah and I remember one guy was like is it true just tell me is it true and I'm like I know what you're talking about but like how could you feel entitled to, to ask just me like that. do you know and it becomes this I just was so aware that because I wasn't hiding it like you I wasn't no. going putting makeup on my bruises I wasn't going no. saying oh nothing I, I fell over like no. that wasn't the route I personally was no, going down I'm good for you I know but that's what you the, the payment for that is that people talk they people do. can be very insensitive um, and they can see you as the girl that was assaulted absolutely you know? um, and absolutely. you're so much that's so much more than that that's yeah. just something that yeah. happened to me yeah and yeah it definitely defined my entire life for two years it really did of course yeah, Ta- yeah I yeah. fell apart yeah I mean um, you know I really I went to such a low place mentally yeah. um, that I didn't really want to continue yeah. living like I really oh didn't God. I just didn't really I was just like what What am I doing here mm. like I'm just so miserable I just feel so worthless yeah. I just feel so like I just feel like my existence is such mm-hmm. a waste right now. Mm-hmm. That's how I really genuinely felt, you know. Wow. I just felt like a waste of space. And um, and I just felt like I was in limbo and I would try to ring guards for updates and I would get nothing. And I was just like so unimportant and so like completely meaningless, yeah. you know. And so, and I was constantly reaffirmed that by having to remain silent so mm. that I wouldn't cause defamation, you know, be prosecuted for defamation. I so know. it was just like oh, this trapped. dark, mm. dark 
little black box um, just so isolated like my mom is such a chatterbox that I knew I couldn't even talk to her about it mm-hmm. in case she slipped and so and I was so afraid to ruin the investigation mm-hmm. and ruin the case and impact the case in mm-hmm. some way oh, much point and I should have talked when I did but sure look anyway yeah <laughs> I know but like yeah it's like so then I suppose I was just when when reality became so distorted inside in that courtroom and I was going you have all these facts. You have all mm. of this. And you are seriously telling me, like, this nonsense. Like, Surreal. what? This place is absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. This place mm. should not exist. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you're still operating like this here. Because this is, like, literally um, th- as if it was, dis- as if it's, we're, I'm back into the 1950s or something or 60s, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. genuinely. Mm-hmm. Felt like walking in there, you're catapulted backwards Mm -hmm. where there's zero progression and Mm -hmm. there's zero regard for the victims or women (laughs) of course (laughs) whether you know all victims mostly Mm -hmm. all victims Mm -hmm. aren't put at the center but especially women yeah you know um it's an extra double whammy if you're also a woman too i think yeah so yeah i just kind of i just said do you know what I'll take it into my own hands. Yeah. I'll do what I gotta do because look, we cannot control what happens to us in life. We can't. Unfortunately not. No, no. we can't. We can't yeah. control what mm. we are put through mm. in this life. We cannot control what happens to us. Um, we also can't control how we fall apart. Oh yeah. And we can't control how we heal. Mm. But we can control what we, how we move forward. Mm. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing. I'm controlling how I've moved forward. I'm controlling, I've put it behind me but mm. I haven't forgotten about it because I don't want it to happen to anyone else. Yeah, of course. So it's yeah. like, okay, that's behind me. It mm. it will always affect me, but it's like not at the centre of my world anymore. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. I've stepped out of that box yeah. with some help from a lot of people that have yeah. supported me. Um, and I think just feeling heard for mm. the first time in two years. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, because when I went up to read my victim impact statement, nobody listened to me. Mm. And so finally feeling heard and having people respond yeah. and agree and feel the same way and relate I was like oh my mm-hmm. god I got work to do here mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I was like I'm gonna do a bit of work here and that's what I'm trying to do yeah yeah so. and the phrase um I came across I think it was last year uh turning your pain into purpose that's mm-hmm. what it sounds that's like it. it's and like, yeah it can be healing mm-hmm. in the long term you know again you can't control that the thing has happened Mm-mm. um but if we can find a way to, you know, as you said, you're helping other people. That's what you're yeah. trying to do. And and that, you know, I suppose that can help, you know, kind it of move can. on from it and frame yeah. it differently. And I'm so glad you were able to move out yeah. of that place because it must have been just such oh, a yeah. difficult But place. it's like, I'm not doing this because I'm a victim with this personal vendetta. Yeah, exactly. I'm doing this because I was a victim and I experienced some serious trauma. Yeah. And whatever happens to me on the streets or in a house whatever mm. but it's the the issue is what happened to me in the system mm. where you know they're supposed to be they're supposed to be um neutral they're supposed to be mm-hmm. you know what it's just not it's very it's not neutral yeah. it's not at all mm-hmm. and so that was that was kind of the aggra- that was the kind of propelling moment mm-hmm. where i said oh my god this is so much bigger than me this actually has nothing got to do with me or that individual that mm-hmm. hurt me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I've been through the system now. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like, unfortunately. Yeah. But at least now I have that experience to warn everybody and demand better. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have been through it. So I know everything that's mm-hmm. wrong with it. Mm-hmm. And I know everything that needs to change. So I'm going to be like, hey, guys, change it, please. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And like, so, yeah. That's yeah. I try and do that myself. Even when I hear of anyone reporting, like or going through a sexual assault case, I'm mm. like, "Can I give you these pointers?" Yeah, because <laughs> I'm like, I've been there, and I'm like, bring a friend, contact the crisis center, change guards. I had to change guards before because the guards are so insensitive. Like you know, there's there's mm. little things as you say we can do that can maybe make it a bit. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say easier, but a bit more. Humane. Doable. Yeah, a bit humane. more humane. Exactly. Mm. Which is, it, it should be when we're thinking about the victim. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Yes. We could, oh, we could go on for to, I really could, like and genuinely. Come back again. <laughs> I know, no, you'll have to. Um, but as you said, you're so much more than just this thing that happened to you. Um, and this is the G spot. So mm-hmm. Sex and Intimacy Relationships Woo. podcast. Now, um, I t- I'd probably should put a trigger warning at the beginning, content warning. But, you know, we will be touching on 
um, sexual assault a bit in, in, mm-hmm. in this and I suppose supporting a partner within that so mm-hmm. just content warning for anyone listening just so you're aware of that but bringing it back for a moment to well I find our first dilemma uh, mm-hmm. sex education did you get much in school sex and relationships education oh I'm not too much memorable sex education yeah. anyway yeah I yeah. mean yeah I remember I remember I think we were in fifth class or sixth class. Okay, yeah, so I was yeah, either eleven yeah. or twelve, and the letter was handed out the sealed envelope with mm. the names, and we had to bring them home to mm. mummy and daddy mm. to sign that we were allowed to participate. Oh, yes, and we were yeah. all like, oh, "We're going to learn about. We're going to learn yeah, about yeah, the yeah. Genita- genitals. genitals. <laughs> we're going to learn about <laughs> penises, yes, vaginas, penises, vaginas. Oh yeah. my goodness." Um, and you know all the boys were terrified and all the girls were so excited I remember like you're like oh my god what's this going to be about yeah. can I sit beside you when it's happening yeah. do you know and um, oh my god it was probably the worst it was the worst little piece of education yeah. ever like but I just remembered that like the just the anticipation mm. and all that energy when the letters were handed out we knew I what know. the letters meant yeah buzzing yeah. buzzing the curiosity the curiosity yes um, yeah I mean most people that come in if they if they've sat in that chair and been a guest and if they've grown up in Ireland they're kind of the same they're yeah. like a little bit of education maybe in 5th, 6th class maybe in secondary school but nothing nothing <laughs> comprehensive yeah. or like sex positive and kind of no. like about pleasure or like about no. healthy relationships oh no. Really. no 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 yeah. funny no <laughs> no I know um, what is a healthy relationship I definitely wouldn't know if I was only going by my school education oh Jesus yeah I would not yeah. know I honestly think that like played I, I'm not for blaming uh, putting all blame in any camp no, when it never. comes to this stuff I agree. but I do think that I mightn't have gotten myself into certain situations had I had better sex relationships in school well mm. actually no I know that I know there would be things that I would have known was a red flag or at least had the word red flag you know the term mm. that you could discuss it a bit or um, like we just I feel like we were all so clueless oh, and yeah. like toxic standards within relationships I think we still are yeah <laughs> I think we still are. That's I fair. mean, I am. That's like, I'm fair. 25 and, yeah. like, I've had a a wild ride with yeah. um, my sexuality mm. and relationships mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have been intense, to say the least. Right, um, yeah. Really toxic and yeah. abusive, basically. Same I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I've been for a wild ride and mm. I'm, I'm still like, I don't know, like, I, I know a lot more, but yeah. Yeah. I'm still kind of, I'm still a little bit confused I'm still nav- yeah. I think we always navigate that oh though. definitely it yeah, yeah. changes what we like what we don't yeah. like yeah. you know who we like who exactly. we don't like yeah. it, it, it changes a little bit yeah and there is an element of like you do kind of have to learn on the go to a degree You're you, ne- you can't just learn how to have a healthy relationship in school like no. to be fair that's not going to happen but even giving like the ba- like f- just foundational yeah. level education that you'd have some awareness that oh it's not normal that like my boyfriend hits me or it's no. not normal that my boyfriend body shames me yeah. or like that he won't let me wear a certain outfit yeah. you know things like that seem mm. nowadays so like of course that's mm. a huge red flag but when you're so young oh, yeah. and you're like in puppy love and you're like oh and you want God. to be liked as and well. you just want to be liked so bad because like as a teenager I would have done I would, I would just want to do anything to fit in yeah. anything to be liked so yeah. when this like big when this big rugby guy came along mm-hmm. and wanted me, I was like, you want me? Oh my yeah. God, okay, whatever you want. And yeah, like, yeah. that was just um, a canon event that a lot of, yeah, a lot of people have, a lot of teenage girls have, you know, that oh, 100%. just like, all just, Alt anything for that um, validation and mm-hmm. anything to be like I have a boyfriend you know, I know. Like, and I was whole, like that and also like I don't I, I lost I think I was 17 when I lost my virginity mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. like I know like that's like a normal age but mm-hmm. like there's so much pressure like there was like girls in my class that had lost their virginity at like 14 mm-hmm, 15 mm-hmm. so I felt like I was behind and I was like and I was just kind of like this this guy showed up and was interested in me mm. and liked me and wanted mm-hmm. to be my boyfriend. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, okay, you, yes. you know, and I yeah. just was just like, at, like anxious to get back into the kind yeah, of... Yeah, to fit in to essentially, fit in, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. then sometimes we look back, like, well, I do, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Like when I look back at some of the people I was with to fit in, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, Grace, like we would have been better off just, Hello. you know, I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
This week's toy is the Ritual Shoe Shoe Pro, thanks to our sponsor, Playblue. So, the Shoe Shoe Pro is a clitoral stimulator, which you know I'm obsessed with, and it's all about tailored pleasure. It's designed to be easy to hold and super comfortable with gentle contours that focus vibrations exactly where you want them. It's rechargeable, waterproof, easy to clean, all that good stuff. With seven options for different intensity levels, it's a great pick for your clit and it's very affordable too. And don't forget, you can also use the code GRACE10 to get 10% off when you're ordering any of your sexy bits from playblue.ie. This show is part of Headstuff Podcasts. Here's another show you might like. Hello, everybody. She's Emma Dorn. She's Dear Joe Kent. Now, sorry to disturb you. We know you're listening to something else, but we wanted to tell you very quickly about Stop our listening to that and listen to us. <laughs> after, after the fact. Sorry, Keep it when tight. you're finished listening yes. to that, listen to us. Yes. We'd love for you to come join us. Our podcast is called Keep It Tight. <laughs> Keep It Tight. Keep It Tight. Have a look at headstuffpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We nearly have how many downloads, Deirdre? Nearly a million. So people are enjoying it. Get on board. Be one of the millions. We're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Okay, speaking of maybe not good partners or not great mm. partners, we're going to our first dilemma, okay? Mm. Um, so, hi, Grace, Alice, and I can see this person is 26 and um, it says F, so female. I am really struggling with my sister's new boyfriend. On the surface, he seems nice enough, chatty, polite, seems to treat her well. But every now and then he says things that really piss me off. He's made some offhand comments that are pretty misogynistic. For example, remarks about women's looks and bodies. Only celebrities, but still. He has also made remarks about several local people who are openly queer, commenting on what they wear and has often come out with the classic, I don't care what they do as long as they don't shove it in my face. Mm. It's obviously not every conversation, but when it happens, it's hard to ignore. I tried to talk to my sister about it to raise my concerns, but she got really defensive. She said I was just being oversensitive and even accused me of being jealous, which really hurt and honestly made me even angrier. I didn't mean to cause any drama. I just wanted to make her aware of the kind of things he's saying. Now, I think she must have told him because he's been acting cold towards me ever since, barely talks to me when he's around and I'm seeing less and less of both of them. Even our parents said that I need to make more of an effort with him, which is maddening. <laughs> they don't seem to understand how problematic some of his views and words are. I feel like I could lose my sister. I'm worried that she's isolating herself with a guy who holds views that aren't healthy. I don't want to push her away even more, but I also can't stand by and say nothing. I'm a person who feels very strongly about my values and treating everyone with respect. Mm. What should I do? What should I do? And I'm just going to say, you know, uh, I can't stand by and say nothing. That's you and me to a T. Mm -hmm. um, I was literally like preach this day. I'm a person Amen. who feels very strongly about my values <laughs> and treating. Like, you're talking to, you're literally yeah. talking to your twin here. This is the, this is why I get in arguments when, I, I, when I'm at weddings. I'd be like, sorry, what should you just <laughs> yeah. say? Like I fully will like, you yeah. know, say something if I hear something. Oh yeah. To yeah. So what, what, what's your initial thoughts or um, any advice on this? What do you think you, we've all been there when we're, where someone, our sister or friend or someone has yeah. a boyfriend or partner that we're like, mm. I don't have a good feeling. I'm not sure about him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> oh, I'm like, first of all, that little quote um, about like, I'm okay with them doing what they like or whatever, mm. but just don't shove it in my face. Okay, how about you don't shove your like little straight relationship in my face? <laughs> exactly. Please, I would I would rather see women What does that it. even mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like shove like, it in my face? Like, like yeah. what? It's like, just such a... Like, yeah. and we're not going to try to have orgies with you. Like, yeah. so I don't know what you're on about. Shove it in your face. You'd be lucky to get it anywhere near your face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's not coming near mm -hmm. your face. <laughs> Definitely not. Your face is safe. <laughs> your face is absolutely <laughs> bored. Your face has no fun in its life. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just... In a light way, like, yeah. honestly. Mm, I know. I know. That just, I think to me, that just screams insecure. Insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Insecure, mm -hmm. projecting. Mm -hmm. um, probably 
knows he's a little bit of an asshole mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, is probably trying to put down all these, I'm assuming, beautiful women mm-hmm. and finding flaws with fabulous women mm-hmm. and beautiful people and picking at flaws mm. to try to maybe m- try to maybe m- make people more imperfect so that he doesn't feel as empty yeah. and you know it sounds like tear it sounds like down. someone mm. that is super empty and super insecure mm. that wants to tear bring drag everyone down to their level and pick out all these flaws so people aren't looking at his flaws because he sounds like he has a lot of them yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> well people get who are happy in themselves and have some decent level of self esteem they're not going around body shaming people they're mm. not going around saying that about queer people you know they're just kind of minding their business basically mm-hmm. Um, particularly body well any kind of shaming um, you know the body shaming is a real red flag for me I'm like oh like I just it, it just speaks so much about the person not oh. about you know the women mm. um, but okay so I think we can agree he sounds awful mm. but then what do you do like mm. so I, I get this struggle because she is with him and there's nothing we can do to control that that's her choice <laughs> um, y- you don't want to I would hate to lose the relationship with her because then what can happen is if she does kind of realise, because she might know, if she's getting defensive, she probably knows on some level there's something not quite, you know, great there. So if she ever does come, hopefully to the conclusion that like this guy isn't good or maybe I'm in this too deep, you want her to be able to come to you and to get her out of it. You want that safe space. You really do. Because I really think the worst thing is to isolate the person that doesn't need to be yeah. isolated. Yeah. Like when there's when there's a clearly an unhealthy relationship mm. or a person in a relationship that isn't mm. healthy, mm-hmm. if you try to blame the other partner mm-hmm. or you try to maybe if you like at the the partner of that person is going to get quite defensive. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. are because mm-hmm. they're with this person. Yeah. So if you are saying that your boyfriend is negative, your boyfriend mm. is homophobic, your boyfriend mm. is whatever. It's like almost an indirect attack saying that I am, um, I can't choose a good partner. Mm-hmm. I am, um, you know, I'm with an awful person. Does that make me awful? Like yeah. it, there, it does without, you're not trying to say that. No. You're absolutely not but trying to do that. Them. But it does. Mm-hmm. You like, as someone that's committed to this person and you're hearing all these negative things about your partner, it does make you feel, oh my God, like, you know, oh, you try to defend that because you don't mm. want to believe you're with someone that's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you try to kind of... Because what does that say about what you? What does that say about mm. you? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you kind of don't want... It's really hard to acknowledge and come to terms that, okay, my partner isn't so great. Yeah. Because that that means then my choice and partner wasn't great. Mm. And that's personal. That's a really so good point. So it's yeah. really hard, like, mm. because... You don't, you don't want, like, you don't want your sister to f- feel like she can't come mm. to you and that you're against her relationship. Yeah. Like, you're not. You want the best for her. Yeah. You don't want her with someone like that. Yeah. But it's really hard when you're in a relationship and you, like, are, for whatever reason, you value this person. And we all have rose-coloured glasses when mm. we're in relationships. It's yeah. very, very hard to be analytical of our partner and logical yeah. of our partner's behaviours. Mm-hmm. We just always know the in and ins and outs of our partner's life mm. so whether they're being super toxic or not we might have an excuse like oh well this is really yeah. hard for them here and there mm. and like nobody else knows that but I get it mm. and so or they you, don't really mean it they yeah, don't mean yeah. it that way yeah and you just like make, make um, yeah. excuses in your own head because you don't want to believe the person you're with is bad yeah. nobody wants that yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to love we want to be with someone we love and yeah. is a good person you know mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. so it's it's really hard but I feel like yeah, what was, mm. it is a tough one. I think something as well that's coming up is like the parents. I'm like, mm. I think the parents probably need to stay out of it a bit, to be honest. Oh, yeah. But um, I'm trying to, th- I think if it were me. Now, the way I, this has happened with friends before mm-hmm. where I'm like, yeah, like you're, your boyfriend literally just said something really homophobic or like he just said something, you know, like, or he just made a comment about your body literally in front of us, right? So, like, I would have been quite, like, I think I would have been, been a bit too harsh at times mm. where it didn't really help things. And mm-hmm. yes, eventually they came around, they were like, yeah, he was desperate, wasn't he? And I was like, yeah. But now, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, again, being in this profession, um, I'm more mature yeah. and more informed and probably the way I'd go about it now. Yeah. Grab the sister separately. What you just said, 
like really clarify this is from a place of love this is yeah. I love. come in soft so I love soft. you so much so I care soft. about you so much no accusations yeah. zero no, no this is not about you mm-mm. this is not a reflection on you um, this is the problem I have with what your boyfriend has said right if you don't have a problem with that that's for you to decide this is the problem I have and I would probably I would be personally setting a boundary around even me spending time with him I'm mm. like okay I can be civil I can mm. say hey how are yeah. you I have a good day but I can't really right now have a relationship further than that with them but I can have Mm -hmm. a relationship with you like just figure Mm -hmm. out is there a way that you know you can have some boundaries in place where you can look after your sisterhood your relationship Um, because it's a new is it a new sorry one second is it a new relationship Um, I've lost it because if it is new I'm like, I don't have to make that much of an... You know, if someone, like, I'm thinking if my brother, like, was married and had children with someone I really didn't get on with, I probably would have to be like, okay, I do just unfortunately have to try, like, maybe a bit harder Mm. because they're they're really part of the family now. Mm. But if this guy, I feel like he's kind of a bit newer in the scene. Maybe because she, she was talking about how like her sister was, they're only just distancing now. Yeah. So, so maybe be, it's like yeah, a current yeah, kind of, yeah. a, okay, this is actually a problem. And he you know? knows, I'd say, what he's doing as well. Oh, sure, they don't. They always do. Yeah, you know, th- mm. he's acting cold towards her. But I do definitely feel like it is, it is really like, it's really hard. Like, because I feel like, you know, as a sister, as a sisters can be explosive. Mm. I don't have sisters. I don't but either. I have friends that have sisters and I have been there for yeah. my friends. And they there has been some wild shit, like yeah. wild. Yeah. Like one of my best friends, her sister, um, I'm her sister, I'm not I'm not gonna give too many information, but um her sister literally poured all like the um all the like the dirt from like the hamster in in enclosure <gasps> into her bed. So when my friend got into the bed it was just like filthy and she had to like get up in the middle of the night and change all her sheets like just out of spite. Are they adults? Are they um, not when this happened? Oh my God. Well, it doesn't my, matter. That's yeah, horrendous. Well, they're, they're, they're like this <laughs> the sister is um in her final years of secondary school Okay. My friend is an adult. Okay, right. Jesus, I would lose my mind. Mm, but that's, yeah, that's sisters. That's so. something you can only do to siblings. Yeah. <laughs> now you shouldn't do it to anyone but Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's that kind of like look you know, si- siblings as well, you can fight, you can drift apart. Now, usually you come back. It is mm. quite, I think it's quite hard to fully sever a, a it family is. bond. It um, is. So not to panic for this person. It like, is don't absolutely. Don't panic too much. Like, you know, like, sister, and now they're best friends, those sisters. Like, yeah. so I mean, yeah. like, you know, that <laughs> just goes to show. Yeah. Like, you know, they bounce back. They yeah, bounce yeah, back. Yeah. But I just feel like you definitely have to like, obviously, like, you know, it is a very, very, vun- it's a v- very vulnerable space for your it sister, yeah. you know, and to come, come at that with like, I love you so much. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm like, maybe like come at it from a sincere angle, like, hey, like I, re- I'm really worried about our relationship. Yeah. I yeah. really love you and I miss you so much. Mm. I feel like we're getting a little bit distant mm-hmm, and like, mm-hmm. I just really don't want that, that to happen at any cost. Like, yeah. you are so important to me and I love you so much as my sister. Yeah. And like, what can we do to like, like really like, you know, like try to just reconnect and mm-hmm. really get to a like place of love before you go into the yeah. the problem that you have your sister feeling like really like safe and like, yeah. OK, no, my sister loves me. She wants the best for me. Yeah. And oh, she's actually. And then when you're kind of ha- in that space of empathy, you might be mm-hmm. able to like come at it and maybe sh- your sister might be able to say, oh, this is actually really affecting her. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, but when yeah. she's in that safe place and there's no accusations mm-hmm. and there's no your boyfriend's doing this or that mm-hmm. and it's just like you know, have that like girl time and then mm-hmm. kind of go, I really don't know what to do about this. Like, I'm mm-hmm. I'm really upset. Like, I love you so much, but I just don't know mm-hmm. how I can hand, how yeah. I can continue to put up with that. Yeah. I just don't, don't want to be around it, you know. Exactly. I was just about to say it's not something you want to be around. No. Yeah, I agree. I think bottom line, you can never force someone out of a relationship. No, never. Ever. Even the worst relationships the worst, in the, the worst. world. It's very hard to do. I do think it is important to call out that kind of behaviour. Absolutely. Um, I don't think that this person is wrong for having done it. I think it's Mm-mm. maybe just how we do it sometimes. It's so hard. You know, is 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 maybe where we need to really put some self-restraint or thought it's into. So it like is. You have it to is. be so like, you have to hold so much of your emotions I know. back. I know. But like, Coming from someone that was in a really toxic relationship, mm. when my friends would come to me and be like, 
your partner's doing this, your partner's doing yeah. that. And like, do you know when, like, they're not good for you and why haven't you left them yet? That would literally just push me away from that friend. Because I'd be like, 100%. I love this person. Yeah. I know they're not perfect. They hurt me. Yeah. They upset me. But I really love this person and I still want to be with them for some reason. It's probably something wrong up there. But anyway, there was anyway for a while. Well, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. and obviously, if you're in a relationship that there's something going on with you. There's something going on with right? you. There so is. Like, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's something going wrong with all There was of us, definitely you know, something going wrong with me at the time and I really yeah. know that. Yeah, and yeah, I really same. see yeah. the evolution of myself since then and mm. the self respect and the self love yeah, I have yeah, yeah. that I just didn't have because yeah, yeah, I yeah. as I told you at the start of the pod like I literally didn't feel like I had any worth I know I just I know. felt like mm, a piece mm. of I just felt like I had absolutely no worth so mm. when you don't feel like you have any worth you let people do whatever exactly. treat you however you yeah, like, yeah, like yeah because yeah. that's they're then reflecting how you already feel about yourself yeah, so yeah. when you're like oh like I'm just absolutely useless I'm a waste of space and then in comes this person that is like making you feel like a waste of space and useless mm. you're like oh this makes sense yeah and you you yeah. don't see anything wrong with that because you mm. already believe that reality so then for my friends come in being like you don't deserve this mm. my own narrative is telling me I do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so when I would have these friends be so like anti my relationship mm. it would literally push a wedge between me and my friends because I would just feel like they don't get it you know they don't understand how hard life is for me at the moment they don't understand how I need this partner for mm. emotional support even though my partner was 100% giving me more emotional turmoil yeah but I still just couldn't face being completely alone at yeah. that time yeah so yeah. literally anything mm. and like the mm. worst of anything was better than nothing yeah you know yeah that's actually make me feel so emotional mm. because yeah. that's I went through like yeah just mm. what you're saying is like ding 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 mm. like I was ticking all yeah. those boxes I just wanted to be lovable I wanted proof yeah. I was lovable yeah. and therefore I accepted love in whatever form it mm. came which was sometimes the opposite, opposite, of, opposite love. of love or like mm. even just a really just unhealthy form of it um so yeah, I think you know it's thinking of that empath that's empathy really is not thinking about okay, you know what's maybe going on with, on with this her yeah. and um I think bottom line again stay just connected to the sister. Just yeah, just her. stay connected with her because to be honest, like that probably might last like mm. if we're being honest it doesn't it sound like it will. Won't. And then she'll need you. I hope it doesn't. When it's, <laughs> yes, so do I. <laughs> um and then she will need you and you'll need each other, you know, um in the yeah. future again, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, Dear Grace Alice, I'm 27 and I'm in a serious relationship with a woman who I love deeply. We've been together for just over a year now, but right before we started dating, she was sexually assaulted. She opened up to me about it early on and I've tried my best to be supportive, but I'm struggling to know how to help her navigate this trauma. And again, listeners, this is should serve as kind of a content warning. Mm. OK, and um, there are times when she seems distant or shuts down especially when having any kind of sexual contact. I don't want to pressure in, sorry, I don't want to pressure her into talking about it more than she's comfortable with because I know that overwhelms her. And sometimes she'll lash out, other times break down crying and start apologising and saying I should just leave her. But I don't want that at all. I feel so helpless. I don't always know the right thing to say or do, but I'm scared I might accidentally make things worse. Mm. I don't think she's able to tell me what she needs either. Mm-mm. I want to be the best partner I can be for her. I'm feeling it, but I'm feeling a little out of my depth. How can I help her heal from this without causing her any further stress? I feel that we've become somewhat stuck in quite a delicate and painful place and I really don't want the relationship to end. Mm. Oh, this is really yeah. tough. Can I just say like mm. absolutely fair play to that partner? Like, they, yeah, do you know, yeah. like they are clearly yeah. like you know, so de- so concerned with mm. being the support that they need to be. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes, sometimes when, you know, someone is navigating sexual assault, you can find yourself with a partner mm-hmm. that doesn't get it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. does isn't, tr- doesn't understand how much support you really need. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I just really love how, like, attentive and caring in this person just really wants to, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, do whatever, like do whatever they can to just yeah. be that shoulder mm-hmm. to cry on and mm-hmm. be that rock, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing. And mm-hmm. I just little. I agree. Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. agree. And more partners like that, please. Yes, lots um, more. Because 
any kind of trauma, sexual assault, even physical assault, mm. like any kind of, I suppose, emotional abuse as yeah. well, anything. Like it can affect people so differently. Mm -hmm. There's no timeline for trauma. No. There's no <laughs> like formula or linear pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, any research on trauma can show us that it can come up any time. It it's insanely abstract. Come up 20 years later. Oh, and yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, Jesus, I thought Boom. I dealt with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I suppose one thing that's happened out to me, Natasha, and I don't know what you mm. feel about this, but you know that question at the end of how can I help her heal from this? It's really tricky because yeah. I understand the wanting to help her Someone heal. heal. Mm. But you really. That's the last thing you want when you're in that situation. Yeah. For anyone to. It's like, be almost under pressure like, to heal. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know it's like, oh my God, I just don't want to see my partner that I love in pain and suffering. It's from a good place. It's yeah. such a good place. Yeah. But like, as someone that has suffered mm. um, sexual assault, has mm -hmm. been, I have been a victim of sexual assault mm -hmm. in the past, um, mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, it's pressure, get, feeling any sort of pressure to be better and mm. get back to myself or like mm -hmm. heal it just like sends you in the opposite direction. It yeah. just puts, makes you spiral. It makes you go, you know, and it's like just to literally, I feel like all you need in that time is just to literally be accepted exactly where you are, yeah. where you're at. Yeah. And literally the, 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 the lesser amount of questions possible, mm. the better. Like the less expectations, the better. Yeah. You know, just mm. to have, I think the most helpful thing is just whether it's like your friend going mm -hmm. through um, tr you know going through this or your partner it's just to mm. give them that genuinely open neutral space yeah of zero expectations yeah. because you actually like do not know like what way you're going to go on any given day or moment mm. and you could be so fine for months and years and then it could just come in like a ton of bricks yeah. or you yeah. could like go through the motions every single day like it's mm -hmm. so or like just little things could set you off or, yeah. you know um anything and everything so it's so yeah. hard you just really need to have you just need to be patient and yeah you need to have the patience of a saint um, oh yeah it's so hard it, yeah it's so hard yeah and yeah and there's no there's no quick thing or guarantee mm -mm. of something that will help and like I'm just looking at the timing of this so yeah. she unfortunately was assaulted right before the relationship mm. began like it might be the case that she's actually not ready to be sexual yet you know mm. they mentioned kind of during sexual yeah. contact that there was stuff yeah. going on because um, that can take time itself and do you know that line where um, they write I don't think she's ready to tell me what she needs or I don't think she's yes. able to tell me what she needs she's, yeah yeah and like th that's that's really insightful like I really love that because it's exactly you know, so you're not really when you're when you're in mm. the process of like going through that trauma mm. and like not even close to being healing yet yeah. you're just going through the yeah. motions Processing it like even, you have yeah. no idea what you need no. you would literally mm. scream you would do anything for mm. someone to tell you what you need yeah because yeah. it's like it's so hard to navigate and your just whole world is turned upside down mm. and your reality is just mm -hmm. like it doesn't nothing makes sense really yeah. and you're questioning yourself and you're questioning everything mm -hmm. and I mean you know like I I am um, I was sexually assaulted mm -hmm. um by an ex-boyfriend mm -hmm. um shortly after we broke up oh god okay. um with one of his friends as well so um and for me it probably took me about two months mm. to even realise, to mm. even acknowledge that I was actually sexually assaulted. Yeah. I didn't want that. And when I was saying no mm. and asking them to stop mm. and to get off me, I actually meant no. Because yeah. I, in my head, kept telling myself, oh, no, 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 but you went back and you did, you know, all I this. Know. like, And like, so like your whole reality is just all over the place. So like for two months, I was actually fine. Yeah, I it hadn't fine. even fine. I was clicked. like, oh yeah, yeah, I just had an, I just had a threesome with my ex and his friend. Mm -hmm. Like that was my narrative in my yeah. head mm -hmm. because I suppose that's like your brain almost trying to Protecting protect you, you yeah. from the reality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of, because mm -hmm. the reality is too hard to face sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my friend kind of sat me down um, after I told her um, like two, three months later and she was like, Natasha, mm. you were raped. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh no no no! But like, sure, like I always had, I've, I had, I had so much consensual sex with him. I was in a relationship with him, and she was like, 
did you want to have sex in that night? And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. She was like, you were raped. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but like I was flirting with his friend that night to make him jealous. Mm -hmm. And she was like, did you want to have sex with his friend? And I was like, no, I was only trying to flirt with him. And she and I was like, but I went back to the, his house um, and was in the room with the two of them. Mm -hmm. And she was like, but did you ask them to do that to you? And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you you have to like and maybe that was really harsh and I wouldn't take that approach with anyone no, to be honest no no I wouldn't either I wouldn't but I think like, I wouldn't I would not that I'm absolutely that is not advice do not ever no, say no, that no, to no, any no. victim of sexual no. assault ever that's something that you need to yeah. probably come to but I think she saw time. how like how much my brain was just going to make excuse after excuse yeah. and just never actually mm -hmm. accept what he did and I think she was afraid that I was going to go back to him Right, you know, so, so was she her, was yeah. just—it was like her moment really to concerned. shake me, yep. to be like, "If you don't realize what he's after doing now, you're going to go back into that yeah. relationship." And I just wanted to scream and shout at you to like try to get through to you how bad mm. this is, you know. Mm. So yeah, it like you know her, her, herself and her mom were like really supportive. Like I never told my mom or anything, but yeah. like it was just kind of her and my, her mom that I was like, mm. you know, um, talking about it. And her mom really wanted me to report it, mm -hmm. and I was like. Mm. Huh? I was like, my word against I two know. of them. And then you have to answer all those questions. Did you go back to yeah. the house? Did you, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that inter and like, that victim blaming. And I'm sure they're, yeah. they, I'm sure the process, I'm sure the defense would have pulled out CCTV of me flirting with your man in the club. Mm -hmm. and said, see, she mm -hmm. wanted it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, I was only kind of, I was young. I was, I was 18. Yeah. I was 18 and I was so young, young and I was just, I don't know, I was like, the relationship was super, super toxic. When I link that back to like, do you know what happened to me two years ago being violently mm. assaulted on the street? Like, yeah. there was CCTV. Yeah. There yeah. was no CCTV mm. in that bedroom mm. that night. You know, mm. there was medical report. There was medical reports. I know. I didn't think to go out and get a rape kit of done. Of course. You know, and most people like, don't. Like, I yeah, didn't even realise yeah. I had been raped for yeah, yeah, yeah. two months. Yeah. You know, so like, there's all of that. And then, and then like, I would go through... I would go through months of, I would go through like long periods of like just like forgetting about it mm -hmm. and it would just go black in my mind and yeah. then all of a sudden it would just come up again and I'd be like mm -hmm. oh my god mm -hmm. do you know so it was like it was very like it was a very different type of trauma mm -hmm. to like say being physically assaulted yeah very different mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I feel like with the physical you can kind of almost see the scars yeah yeah you know but yeah. with the with sexual assault it is so hard. Like you can't, you're constantly questioning yourself and so is everybody mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. you know. I know. So it's it's really hard and I feel like supporting someone going yeah. through that, mm. I mean, the less questions, the better. I said that again and I'll say, I keep saying it like literally mm -hmm. just like <laughs> expect the unexpected mm -hmm. because it is just a violent healing process. Like, and you, you can be so fine and unfazed and then just, pops up like yeah. you were saying yeah yeah you know yeah. and it's it's just it's so hard to navigate I mean I mean like you know you'd be you'd be googling trying to figure out like how do I support like my friend or my partner that's I know been through this. yeah and I don't yeah. feel like google has that many answers no because there isn't that there's no answer there's no straightforward it's, there's no straightforward. when you're when you're dealing with something so complex as that and what you've described with your experience there like perfectly highlights that you know god it even took you two months to mm. even your conscious mind to even form yeah. the thought and so seven years later I still gaslight myself and I'm like I know no, no, that didn't really happen. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to like shake myself and, and remind, be like, yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's so hard for you to wrap your head around the fact that that, that something like that can happen happened. to you. And and by people you know and, and there's people so you know. much And it's there. just, and yeah. even if it's not someone, if, even if it's someone you didn't know, like, oh, you know, yeah. it's it's just so hard. Yeah. And you'll, and you'll just find all these reasons to mm. explain why why um you wanted it or mm -hmm. asked for it or why maybe there was a miscommunication with consent yeah. or you know like you just it's something so difficult for you to really believe yeah of course but I think you can only really like put it behind you when you kind of uh, you face it and go okay that happened to me yeah because obviously once you once you realize it did happen that's when you can actually start and you have the language that's mm. when you can maybe think about seeking support now that could take time mm, obviously as well but years. at least you are at a point where like okay this thing yeah. happened so yeah. 
what do who can help me with yeah. this as a psychotherapist whoever it is like with this person writing we don't know mm. the nature of the assault we don't no. know what happened who it was when it ha- you know we don't have that context no. so what we're just hearing is that this uh, it's a woman isn't it is, is really struggling and yeah. like obviously struggling in the relationship maybe in general but sexually as well mm. um, so it might be it might be a case of kind of this the writer yeah. saying to their partner look again coming from like with the last time I coming from a place of pure love mm. I love you I care about you so much um, you know it seems like you're having a hard time you're you're yeah. struggling and I just really want to support you so maybe even suggest we let's not have sex for a while yeah and see how um, you feel about that yeah let's mm. just like work on like touching and cuddling yeah or like th- let's just have cute date nights exactly. and like have no pressure yeah, yeah, and yeah. if something happens like maybe just kind of maybe just say okay I am giving I'm putting the ball into your court now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am for the to- for for now like I'm giving you this instigation ball yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be instigating yeah. like and it's not that I don't love you and I don't find you attractive yeah. I do I'd love to rip your clothes off mm. but I want it to be in a place I want it to be when you are comfortable mm-hmm. and you don't feel pressured and you're not doing it because you want you don't want me to be disappointed or you don't want to please me like I am ha- like I think it would be really important just to be like I'm happy just to be in a relationship with you mm. the sex is a bonus but yeah. like mm-hmm. you are the person that I love, mm-hmm. you are the person mm-hmm. that I care about and being with you in any capa- in whatever capacity that you're able for, yeah. you know, yeah. and I'm going to just give you that power mm. to kind of, you can decide when you're comfortable. And mm-hmm. if there's, we have a great date night some night and you're like, I'm feeling a little bit frisky, yeah, like happy, mm-hmm. happy, but I'm just think like it's, you know, it's not that I don't find you attractive, but mm-hmm. I'm just going to take a step back from the physical um, so that I can give you that space to figure out how you feel about yeah, it all. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. I 100% agree, just that that, that I think that would be music there. to my ears. Oh, yeah. If I was going through yeah, that. Yeah, Just... Because, we, you know, which the reaction she's having of kind of what did you like kind of breaking down crying or saying you should leave mm. me or sometimes lashing out like, you know, they can be obviously very normal yeah. response, like trauma responses, all of mm. that. And, you know, I would say to anyone listening just to kind of maybe we've said it already, but just mm. to reiterate that, like, when you feel able and ready, you know, seeking professional help is, is so, so important. important. It's very hard to deal mm-hmm. with all this yourself Mm -hmm. and the people around you who love you most of them aren't trained I mean I'm not not even like I'm not a I'm not a psychotherapist Mm. so I'm on this podcast just as a woman myself who's been assaulted and gone through bits um bits the rest of that bits and bobs you know yeah you know your average life of a you're just normal woman's life just physical and sexual assault just yeah um, all the time nothing too abnormal which is true yeah yeah which (laughs) even though it's sad but yeah but it is true it's not out of the normal yeah so um yeah, so just to say that, that like, you know, it, it's it's no one's responsibility to heal anyone else nope. or to, and it's no one's responsibility to heal Themselves, quickly. No. It's really like finding the, the support system. So having, yes, if, if it's your partner, your friends around yeah. you, um, when when you feel ready, maybe talking to them a bit about what you need and what triggers yeah. you or what, you know, but having professional support, oh, I yeah. think, is so key. So like oh, yeah, Rape absolutely. Crisis Network. Yeah, Rape, Rape Crisis, crisis Network yeah. Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Rape Crisis, mm. I mean... I mean, I had a private counsellor at the... I had my own counsellor at the mm, time mm. Um, when it happened to me. So mm-hmm. I was able to just continue... I was able to bring that up in counselling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe like a year later. Yeah. When I was yeah. like... Pa- like maybe like two years later. Mm, I'm mm. not... It was a long period later. Mm. You know, we I had one or two conversations with my friend and then I was just like, okay, mm, I'm mm-hmm. shutting that box right now. Yeah. I can't look in that box yep. right now. And sometimes we just can't and we're oh, just not ready. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. So maybe your, girl, your partner might actually get to a point where she just wants to kind of ignore and avoid mm. how she's feeling about all that. And that's okay too. Mm-hmm. You know, you can... You know, you're not... You shouldn't... There's no um, timeline on when you should deal with it, you know? Yeah. So it's like when she feels ready encourage her to get support yeah. but like like I don't feel like forcing any conversations about mm. it is ever going to be helpful no, no I no, think no. kind of even though like you want them to know that like you see them mm. and you care about them and you hope they're doing okay mm. I feel like when you like instigate conversations on how do you feel about this and tell me about it and mm. like how mm. do you know I feel like that just puts more pressure yeah and it's she's really not hard. there yet like you no. can, we can very clearly see that yeah absolutely 
Okay, so yeah, really tough one, but I think it's really important to discuss. Um, mm. And you said that as well off air that like it is a really important topic. And, Absolutely, you know, it's yeah. um, it's something that's unfortunately so so common. So common. And you know, look, a lot of the G Spot episodes have. I don't think any of them have really featured any reference as far as I can remember to yeah. sexual assault. This is so heavy. It's, no, but yeah, but that's it good. It has its place because we can't just ignore it. It's like the no. elephant in the room as well no. because True. it True. is part of a lot of our... And it's part of sex. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. like trauma is something we need to consider when we think about like how we have sex mm, and... It affects our sex you know, lives, our relationships. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, even like... I know I mentioned I was sexually assaulted, uh, but like even the physical assault, I think, mm. a physically abusive relationship I was in, I think that even for me personally mm. has had a, it's been 10 years ago now, it still affects mm. me, you know. Mm. Now I'm in a wonderful relationship. It's lovely. It's fabulous. Thank, touch wood, thank God. But like, you know, even then I have to be very clear. I'm, I'm, my partner would never raise a hand to me. He doesn't even yeah. raise his voice. Like it's just <laughs> such a, just like brilliant man <laughs> but I have had to say at times where things he might know even like yeah. like if he suddenly like loud noises now like sudden loud noises yeah. I have this like really triggered like serious response mm. like or if someone like I don't know grabbed me or like threw something at me suddenly mm. that sounds like he's throwing things at me around that yeah. but you know like even through like, oh, like, like oh this is your hairband that I found yeah, and like, just throws it at you and you're like oh you, you know, know or like simple it's so funny the things that can like that just your body thinks it's back in yeah. that um, like shouting is something I, I genuinely it's not just I don't like it I cannot tolerate uh, it uh, uh. I actually get I go into this terrified leg shaking gonna vomit response if someone is roaring at me mm. again thankfully my partner doesn't roar at me but if even at the beginning of our relationship when we were learning how to fight because you have to learn how to mm. argue with your partner you do you know if there was any raising even slightly of the voice I'm like, mm, I'm like meant, out of there checked out. not even engaging yeah. so it's just it takes it takes time mm-hmm. to figure out all the all the things that yeah. might might affect you. Yeah. Um, God, that sounds very negative. I don't mean in a negative but way. But like, at all. it's just it's, like you can still have a wonderful relationship. Oh, you can like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But it's like we all have boundaries. Yeah. And we all have triggers. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. just part of being a human. Yeah. Stuff happens. Yeah. You live a life. Stuff happens. Yeah. Stuff reminds you of that stuff. You live a life. Stuff uh, happens. I love. You know that. what I mean? <laughs> like this t-shirt. is like the most like you live a life. Stuff. <laughs> Stuff's got to happen. Stuff's got to happen. Uh, some stuff's going to happen. No, you're but right. But like, it's yeah. like, okay, just, you know, if you're going to start sharing your life with someone yeah. that you want to do more stuff it. with, you got to let them know about the stuff that mm-hmm. happened in the past mm-hmm. so that you can mm-hmm. avoid that stuff yeah. and yeah. do better stuff yeah. together. Yeah. And I've said stuff about a hundred times now in the last like 30 stuff seconds. Stuff and bits and bobs. You know, but, <laughs> but I mean, like, it's, it is that simple. Like, we all, we all come with a bit, we all come with a little bit of baggage. Yeah. We all come with something. Of course. And yeah, yeah, yeah. If your partner doesn't know about that, they might accidentally upset you or yeah. hurt you and definitely not mean to. No. You know, if you're in a healthy relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, it's important to have a little bit of transparency. Yeah. You know, and when you're ready to share exactly. that stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. to have that because it's going to support you. If you're with someone that mm. wants to support you, mm. you got to let them know how to support you. Yeah. That's you know? so true. Um, you got to teach people how to love you. Yeah, because we all need love to, in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And, you know, when I talk about sex, I'm like, you have to teach people how to please you. Yeah. Like, all these things can't be assumed. No, um, no, no. We actually do have to, like, educate each other. Yeah. Um, which can be, like, a lovely journey And it can well. be fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's usually exciting. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, again, anyone going through that or has been through that, like, it... it Absolutely, just to reiterate, we, we can maybe finish on this because yes. I could speak to you all night, but um, it is 100% possible to have a lovely, you know, oh, yeah. wonderful, loving, even sexual relationship. Mm. Um, so your focus on where you are, yes. not where anyone else is. Yeah. There's no set timeline. Nope. Um, but you you will, like, you can yeah. get there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Natasha. I think that was great. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, actually, go I'm going to add to your time, yes, final go topic that it is very, very possible to have a very happy and healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. But the first step in that is having one with yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, got, yeah. Like, mm. if you do not accept yourself mm-hmm. for everything that comes with you. Yes. You do not look in the mirror and accept what's there and mm-hmm. love it. It's going to be hard to have a happy, healthy, it can be, it can be, it can be mm. much more challenging. Mm. I feel like it is so crucial to love yourself, respect yourself, like know your worth because mm-hmm. we're all worth so much mm-hmm. and 
we get we things happen to us in life that makes mm-hmm. us feel like we're not worth anything. Yes, yeah. So if you if you're struggling, relearn your worth slowly. Don't mm-hmm. put any pressure on yourself. But mm-hmm. learn like what makes you happy and what things you do that make other people happy yeah. and like what you contribute to this wonderful mm-hmm. life because mm-hmm. it can be so wonderful. Mm-hmm. And when you can have that build that healthy relationship with yourself and know all the fantastic things that you bring to the table, mm-hmm. um, then you can build that with someone else too and share those parts of you. Yeah. But you have to have those, understand those parts of you first. Yeah, because you, know? you have to feel like you're you're worth a bit of yeah. work. You're and you can't patient. build a house on broken, fe- mm. on a bog, like, mm-hmm. that's just sink. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> True, like, yes, yes, yes. On a bog, no, like, absolutely. Going back to my farmer's daughter roots, like, <laughs> Metaphor wrapping off the there. G-spot with the bog. <laughs> I was fucking out cutting turf and I don't think we've talked about the bog half enough on on this podcast Um, I totally agree and I think yeah um, yeah, you you know you have to feel like you're worth the work you're worth patience you're worth all of that and so is your partner and that's a beautiful space to be in when you will when you you get there Um, Natasha is there anything at all as we finish you want to share like you know where people people could support you or find you or anything like Um, that you want to say well um, at the moment, I am predominantly just kind of sharing my updates on, you know, my campaigning mm-hmm. and what I'm up to mm-hmm. on my Instagram, Natasha O'Brien Limerick. It's fairly simple. Yes. Um, Limerick Glass. But... Limerick Glass, I know, <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, no, um, yeah, that's kind yeah, of it. That's the honest. main place. Yeah, that's, that's where you're going to find me. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And there might be links to other things there. Yes. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Gorgeous. Most of the time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, sometimes I need to get one of those screen limits as well. But I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. We could all work on that, I think. Yeah. But yeah, but that is where people can connect with you in your work yes. and your updates and all that. So fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. A huge thank you to Playblue, Ireland's favourite adult store, for sponsoring this episode of The G-Spot. You can browse through their impressive selection of toys, lingerie and lots more sexy essentials at playblue.ie. This show is part of the Head Stuff Podcast Network, a hub for the creative and the curious. Shows are produced in association with Head Stuff and the Podcast Studios Dublin. Find out more or become a member at headstuffpodcasts.com.